The next topic uh, for alkanes is going to involve using the non-cyclic alkanes. We'll get into cyclic alkanes for the lecture on Wednesday. But for today, we're or for actually for Monday the 17th, we're going to talk about basically some more types of stereoisomers that are possible for alkanes. And so we have to go back and remember what are stereoisomers from a couple weeks ago. Stereoisomers are basically molecules that are the same structural isomer. So that means that those, that the two structures have the atoms attached identically, but they have different three-dimensional structures. Okay. And so the examples that we had seen before, the so-called geometric isomers that your textbook talks about, were things like the cis-trans isomers that are involved in a in a double bond. So for instance, these were our two examples of the cis and the trans stereoisomers or the cis and the trans geometric isomers. Another type of stereoisomer though is one that can actually occur with alkanes. And so if you remember with alkanes, talked or well you don't talk, I talk, about the idea of taking and having quote-unquote free rotation around a carbon-carbon single bond. So if I have ethane, I can rotate around this carbon-carbon single bond, and I can rotate this hydrogen back into that position, maybe rotate this hydrogen up into this position, and then that hydrogen may be into the forward position. So the idea is that it will take energy to do this rotation around the carbon-carbon bond, but normally at room temperature, there's more than enough energy to have this become accomplished. And so these types of stereoisomers are slightly different. And these stereoisomers are what are called conformations. So a conformation is a different type of stereoisomer. Cis-trans isomers are one type of stereoisomer. A conformation is, occurs when you basically have different three-dimensional structures, but now the relationship is that you get those three different, you get those different three-dimensional structures as they're formed by rotation around a single or what I would call the sigma bond. And so you can get different three-dimensional stru three dimensional structures if you rotate around the carbon-carbon single bond. And those types of stereoisomers are what are called conformations. So we have cis-trans isomers, and these are different because you cannot convert a cis into a trans, right? You can't convert those, not at room temperature. You have to break the, the pi bond first. But for conformations, we can convert one conformation into another. So that's a big difference between these two types of stereoisomers. So we're going to talk about the conformations that are possible for alkanes, and we're going to do both branched and straight-chained alkanes. And so let's look at sort of a, a better picture of this process. So here's ethane. I've kind of shown it in its, in its tetrahedral representation. The hydrogens on the bold wedges are pointing towards you. The hydrogens with the regular bonds are in the plane of the paper or in this case, the plane of the computer screen, the dashed wedges are ones pointing away from you. So if I translate this structure into this model, here's what I see. Because this hydrogen 
is in the plane of the screen. This hydrogen's in the plane of the screen. These two are pointing towards you, the bold ones, and then these ones are pointing away from you, the, the uh, dashed ones. So if you rotate around this carbon-carbon single bond, you can get different three-dimensional structures. Okay, and so if I start, if I go back here, I'm going to take and I'm going to start rotating. I'm going to rotate this hydrogen so that it's up in the plane of the screen. I'm going to rotate this hydrogen down so it's actually in the same orientation on, as this and I'm going to rotate this one for, so that it's pointing towards you. And when I do that, I get this structure. Now that's not, that structure's not this. This st structure would kind of look like this. I would have the two hydrogens pointing up, sort of in the plane, the two hydrogens down here pointing towards you, and then the hydrogens in the back pointing away from you. This isn't perfectly lined up that way, but it's pretty close. So here's a different three-dimensional structure, a different conformation of ethane. And I can continue that process. Here's the one that's perfectly aligned with the hydrogens. These two hydrogens are both in the plane of the screen. So as I said earlier, conformations are different three-dimensional structures that can be formed by rotation around a carbon-carbon sigma bond. And so that's the critical definition of conformations. And so we're going to talk about different conformations and the energetic issues that are involved in forming one conformation over another. Now, the problem that we have is that when we try and represent the three-dimensional structures, even if we draw a structure that looks like this, as helpful as the tetrahedral representation is, it's sometimes quite difficult to tell that this conformation is slightly different than, let's say, this one. Now, if you're looking at that saying, well, geez, I can tell the difference between the two of those, then okay. But for some molecules, it gets to be a little bit harder. So what we do to represent the different possible conformations on, down a carbon-carbon single bond is to write what is called a Newman projection. So if we had this model, for instance, of the sawhorse, this is called a sawhorse representation because it kind of eventually would look like a sawhorse if you made that. And a sawhorse is what? One of those things that kind of you have a two by four going this way and then you've got your two things and you use it to hold the wood on. That's the sawhorse that you, horse, that you saw things on. But in this case, this is called the sawhorse representation. The Newman projection is when we take our giant eyeball and we look down the carbon-carbon single bond, and then what we're going to see is something that looks like the picture on the right. What we see is the front carbon, and then we have a hard time seeing the back carbon, but we'll take care of that in a moment. So we see the three hydrogens that are attached to the front carbon, and then we see the three hydrogens that are attached to the back carbon. But if we're looking perfectly down the carbon-carbon bond, we don't see the back carbon. But the idea here is that, it, is that if I rotate these groups, I can easily see one conformation from another, particularly if these groups are different. And so this is what's called the Newman projection, or what I'll show you in a moment is what's called the Newman Projection, which was named for Professor Newman, who was at The Ohio State University for a number of years. One of their chemistry buildings is actually named after him. It's the Newman, I think it's the Newman Chemistry Building. So we can't draw this Newman Projection with ball and stick models all the time, so we have to have a slightly different um, way of drawing it out. And so here's what we do. Here's that same representation the eyeball looking down the carbon-carbon bond, and what I've done is color-coded this so that the front carbon is now purple. So this is what a Newman projection looks like. 
I take and draw three, the three bonds to this carbon right here, to that central carbon right there. And so those three positions represent the positions that are attached to the front carbon. And if you, even though these bond angles are 109 and a half, if we look down this bond and represent them, they're going to be at 120 degrees away from each other. Then the back carbon we show explicitly, and then the three hydrogens that are attached to the back carbon. So this purple part is the front carbon, and then this dark blue part is the back carbon. So in the Newman projection, then, we represent the six different groups that are possible to be attached to a carbon-carbon single bond. And so it's easy to tell, then, if I have one conformation over another, because these structures will look a little bit different. Okay? So here are the two extreme conformations for ethane. There are lots of little conformations depending on what this angle between these hydrogens are. And they could be, you know, one degree, two degrees, and there's an almost an infinite number of combinations there. But let's look at the two extremes. The two extremes are to have the hydrogens as far away from each other as possible, namely to have them at 60 degree angles. Okay, because the, the hydrogen, this is a 120 degree angle. So the 60 degree angles, then these hydrogens are as far away from each other as possible. And you can see that down here. So that's one extreme. The other extreme is to have the hydrogens as close to each other as possible and have the bonds then parallel to each other. And so in this case, you would have a model that looks like this. This is the Newman projection where we basically write these bonds. We don't write them be directly behind. We kind of offset them. And so this conformation is the one where the hydrogens are perfectly aligned. Or the, later on, what we'll say are the groups are completely aligned. So these two extreme conformations are called the one where the hydrogens are as far away from each other. That's called staggered. And the ones where the hydrogens are close together is called the eclipsed conformation. So we have these two extreme conformations. Which one of these two conformations do you think is the most stable? Which one do you think is the least stable? Okay. Well, it turns out that hydrogen atoms are just big clouds of electron density. So having them as far away from each other as possible would make staggered more stable and make the eclipsed the least stable. And actually, an eclipse conformation usually is so unstable that it exists for just a fleeting second. And you can kind of see that if you were to rotate around the carbon-carbon bond, to rotate, let's say, hydrogen A, and I wanted to rotate hydrogen, let's say, B over here, all the way over here into, let's say, the hydrogen C position, that I would actually, at some point in the rotation of that bond, have HA and HB become eclipsed. And so whenever we're doing our free rotation, it turns out that the eclipse conformations are the high energy species as we go and rotate the bonds a total of 120 degrees. Okay, So these are the two extremes, staggered and eclipsed. Staggered is always more stable than eclipsed. This next picture kind of shows you the reason for that in the fact that when you do have an eclipsed, you have what we call eclipsing hydrogens, and that means these two hydrogens are as close together as they can get. Those hydrogens represent clouds of electron density. An even better picture is to look at what we call the space filling model for this, and you can see that the hydrogens are very close together here, and over here they're nicely separated. So the eclipse conformation is less stable than staggered and when we start writing conformations here in a moment, 
we're going to find that all of the staggered confirmations are always more stable than any of the eclipsed confirmations. Okay. So, ethane is nice, but it only has two really extreme confirmations. So let's make this molecule a little bit harder. And let's look at the confirmations that are possible for N-butane. So in this case, I'm going to look down the carbon-2, carbon-3 bond of N-butane. And I want to write possible confirmations, both staggered and eclipsed, for those, um, for those, for N-butane. So how do I draw it first? Let's start with the staggered confirmations. So if I'm going to look down the carbon-2, carbon-3 bond, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a blank staggered Newman projection. And so that's this. The front carbon here is going to be carbon-2. The back carbon is going to be carbon-3. So here's my front carbon. Here's my back carbon. Now, in order to trans translate and butane into a Newman projection, what I need to do is to figure out, well, what's attached to carbon-2, the front carbon? Okay, can you tell me? How about a methyl group and two hydrogens? That's what's attached to carbon-2. If you're saying, well, what about carbon-3? In the Newman projection, I'm already showing that with the front carbon and going to the back carbon. So I got a, I got a methyl group and two hydrogens attached to carbon-2. So how about I'll write the methyl group here, the hydrogen, and the second hydrogen there. So this, this is your CH2 with a CH3 attached to it. Okay, then what's attached to carbon-3, the back carbon? If you said another methyl group and two hydrogens, you're right. And so here is a possible staggered conformation for N-butane. The back carbon's got two hydrogens and a methyl group. The front carbon has two hydrogens and a methyl group. And carbon-2 and carbon-3 are attached in the Newman projection. Okay. Is this the only possible staggered conformation for N-butane? No. I can draw two more. So I'm going to draw two blank staggered conformations. And what I'm going to essentially do is I'm going to essentially rotate around this carbon-2, carbon-3 bond. And by rotation, what that means is I'm going to rotate either the back carbon or the front carbon. Now, what I like to do is I like to keep the front carbon the same. And then I like to rotate the back carbon. So this would be the equivalent in one of these models of grabbing the back carbon and beginning to rotate. So I choose, I'll keep the front carbon in the same orientation and then I'll rotate my back carbon. You can do the opposite. You can keep the back carbon the same and rotate the front carbon. The one thing you do not you do not want to do is to start rotating both carbons because then you may end up with all three conformations being exactly the same. So let's rotate the back carbon and let's do it counterclockwise. So I'll rotate the methyl group into this position, this hydrogen over into this position, this hydrogen into that position. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get a CH3 here, an H here, and another H there. Let's do that one more time. Let's rotate the methyl group over here, the hydrogen over here, and then the other hydrogen there. So now I've formed my third confirmation, my third staggered confirmation. So now I have my three staggered confirmations. 
and I should probably ask the question of are any of these confirmations the same and before you say that they're the same let me talk a little bit about what I mean by the same what I'm gonna say is do any of these confirmations have the same energy okay so do they have the same energy and then the question is going to be which one of these is more stable than the other or do they all have the same energy well let's remember that the methyl groups represent large clouds of electron density and having a carbon and three hydrogens attached is going to be a bigger cloud of electron density than a small hydrogen and so if you had to say which is more stable A or B which one would you say is more stable if you said that A is more stable you'd be correct and B is then less stable why because having the two big clouds of electron density the two big alkyl groups next to each other is less stable than having them as far away from each other as possible makes sense and I'll show you some models in a moment that kind of show you that now what about C does C have the same energy as B well it has two methyl groups next to each other and so it turns out that B and C have the same energies and so therefore B and C have the same energies but they are less stable than A okay. now you might say but B and C are they the same structure and what we have to do is assume that the front carbon is the front carbon and the back carbon is the back carbon and so I'm not going to flip this molecule around I'm going to almost treat it like resonance structures where I'm going to say the only thing I can do is rotate around the carbon-carbon bond. And so I'm going to say B and C have the same energies, and I'm going to leave it at that. But A is more stable than B or C. Okay, you with me so far? Well, there's actually, for these staggered conformations, there are terms that we use when the two groups are opposite of each other in a Newman projection that's what's called the anti conformation or oftentimes we'll talk about two groups being anti when they're next to each other that's called gauche and so whenever you have two groups or you talk about two positions that are next to each other in a staggered conformation that's called gauche so we have an anti conformation and we have a gauche conformation for the staggered conformations of n butane an anti is more stable than gauche okay so now let's look at some pictures so here's my anti on the right here's my gauche on the left here's my little models that kind of show the methyl groups and then the hydrogens here they are gauche to each other and here they're anti to each other if we look at the space filling models here you can see that these two methyl groups are really close in space and so again they represent big clouds of electron density and so therefore they will be interacting with each other and then they will make this the less stable conformation in the anti conformation those large groups are actually anti to each other they're far away and so it turns out that this conformation the anti conformation is more stable than the gauche conformation by about 0.62 kilocalories per mole and you might say is that number important and the answer is yes 
but in order to talk about that what we'd have to do is to realize that this is an equilibrium between gauche and anti and so there's an equilibrium constant that we could draw for this which means that there is sort of a delta E term which really should mean free energy delta G but I'm just gonna leave it as delta E and so delta E if I'm talking about a free energy like term would be equal minus RT LN K so that if I knew the energy difference between these two conformations I could ultimately calculate the equilibrium constant between for this equilibrium and I could at, count or calculate the number of molecules that were anti versus the number of molecules that were that were staggered uh, staggered gauche so these energy terms can actually be used to calculate how many molecules out of a hundred would be anti versus how many molecules would be gauche okay and if you just had a flashback to general chemistry that's what it is but I just show you this energy because there is there is a half a, a little bit more than a half a kilocalorie per mole difference and so that would be what that would be a little over two kilojoules per mole difference okay so there's my anti and gauche staggered conformations for butane but now let's draw the eclipsed conformations and there's going to be three total eclipse conformations so what I like to do is I like to draw out my staggered usually the staggered one that I started with and now let's turn this into an eclipsed conformation well the eclipsed Newman projection is going to look like this so on the front carbon let's keep it with hydrogen two hydrogens and a methyl and now let's go ahead and draw the other two blank eclipse conformations and so now let's how am I going to convert this gauche conformation into the eclipse well I'm not instead of rotating the back carbon 120 degrees I'm only going to rotate it 60 so how about I rotate this methyl group so it's now eclipsing that hydrogen I'm going to rotate this hydrogen so it's eclipsing that methyl and I'm going to rotate that hydrogen into eclipsing that one so I'm going to end up with my CH3 group here my H there and my H there so there's confirmation number one eclipse confirmation a so now we go 120 degrees take the back methyl group rotate it up into this hydrogen take this hydrogen rotate it down here take that hydrogen rotate it over there so then here's my two methyl groups that are eclipsing each other and then do that again to get my third eclipsed conformation for butane so I now I have three staggered and three eclipsed as I said earlier all of the staggereds are more stable than any of the eclipsed right and we'll combine all these together in a moment but if I asked you are any of these eclipsed conformations do they have the same energy which ones do you think have the same energy if you said A and C you're right although one of these days I'm gonna say you're wrong but not today so those have the same energies A and C and, and B is different now how did I know A and C had the same energies because I've got a methyl eclipsing a hydrogen a hydrogen eclipsing a methyl and two hydrogens eclipsing each other over in C I've got a methyl eclipsing a hydrogen a methyl eclipsing another hydrogen 
and two hydrogens eclipsing. So they have exactly the same number of groups eclipsing each other. Now B is different because it's got two sets of two hydrogens eclipsing and two methyl groups eclipsing each other. So now if I asked you which one is more stable, A and C or B? Which one would you say is the more stable of those? And again, if you said A and C, you're correct. Those are more stable. And the least stable of all is where the two large alkyl groups are eclipsing each other. Okay, does that make sense? Well, let's look at some more molecular models. Here's the two methyl groups eclipsing. Here's the methyl groups eclipsing a hydrogen. You can see in the space filling models that having these two methyl groups, not exactly the greatest thing for them to eclipse hydrogens, but at least they're far away from each other. If I have them eclipsing each other, I've got two clouds of electron density that are really close in space, and that's not a good situation. Okay, so both of the eclipsed, but but in the end, the eclipse conformations are still less stable than the most unstable of the of the gauche or of the staggered ones. So when we are actually going to take a molecule and write the three staggered and the three eclipsed, when I rank all six of those according to energy, number one, two, and three are going to come from the staggereds, and number four, five, and six are going to come from the eclipsed. Okay. So here's a little diagram that kind of shows us, as we rotate around, how we have energies. So here I'm going to start at the bottom here. And I'm plotting energy on the on the x or on the y-axis, and I'm just going to kind of rotate around the carbon carbon bond. In your book, they usually show a degree down here, showing the degrees of rotation. But let's just look at this from uh, from a sort of a standpoint here. Of here's the two methyl groups, and they're anti to each other. So I'm going to call that zero kilocalories per mole of energy. When I rotate the methyl group and now eclipse it with the hydrogen and vice versa over here, when I form the first eclipsed conformation, I now increase the energy by a grand total of 4.3 kilocalories per mole. And I got these numbers 20-some years ago just by using the computer to model this. And you'll see this in lab the last week when we do some computer modeling. So then I'm going to continue to rotate. So now I'm going to rotate the methyl group up here into the staggered conformation. And so here's my staggered gauche. And my staggered gauche, as I said earlier, was only 0.6 kilocalories per mole higher in energy than the staggered anti. And now if I rotate the methyl group up here, I'm going to go ahead and increase the energy a lot up to 5.9 kilocalories per mole. So what we end up with is a diagram that kind of looks like this. And so that quote-unquote free rotation that I talked about around the carbon-carbon bond, well, it, like most everything else, is not free. Instead, if I look at this as kind of a diagram that you talked about in general chemistry, I'm kind of talking about reactant to product and I have some energy difference as I'm increasing the energy of the molecule by forming the eclipsed conformations. Now, might be a little bit of a stretch to try and remember what this energy is between the reactant, essentially, and this structure, or even remember what that structure is. But this is what's called the transition state or the activated complex. I think Chang still uses that term. I'll use transition state. And then what was the energy to get to the transition state? If you said activation energy, you're correct. 
So there is a certain activation energy for the quote unquote free rotation around a carbon-carbon bond. But for the most part, here you could see the activation energy was about four was about four kilocalories per mole, or over here it's about it's a little bit over five kilocalories per mole. It turns out that that thermal energy at room temperature gives these molecules in the order of about 20 kilocalories per mole of energy to sort of play with. And so overcoming a 6 kilocalorie per mole barrier is not really all that difficult if you've got 20 available to you from room temperature, from the kinetic energy, um, thermal energy that you have available at room temperature. If you lowered the temperature, you could begin to sort of freeze these conformations out if you gave them less energy than the activation energy barrier. Okay. So the idea here is that we want to be able to write conformations of alkanes, and we want to be able to then determine which ones are more stable, which ones are less stable, and sort of rank them that way. Okay. Now, oftentimes when you read the, uh, when you look at straight chained alkanes, so here's n-pentane and n-decane, you'll often see them drawn in this zigzag conformation. Why is the molecule drawn in this zigzag conformation? Well, it turns out that that's the more, most stable of the staggered conformations. And so if we take n-pentane as an example, oops, oh no, I lost that slide. Let's say I look down this carbon-carbon bond. Here's a good problem. So if I have pentane, I'm going to go to the next slide and do this. So if I have pentane, and I tell you, hey, draw the three staggered and three eclipse conformations for looking down the carbon-2, carbon-3 bond of n-pentane. What would that, what would those conformations look like? Well, if you're an overly ambitious go-getter student, you could stop the tape right now and try and draw out the three that staggered and three eclipsed and then check versus what I'm going to draw here for the moment. And if you're a really overly ambitious go-go-getter student, you could try and rank the energies of those six conformations after you get done drawing them. So you could stop the tape and do that. Okay. If you're just kind of like, eh, let me be a go-getter student tomorrow, then let's draw out the six conformations that are possible for pentane. So I'm going to draw three blank staggered Newman projections. I'm going to draw out three eclipsed conformations. I'm now going to have to figure out my front carbon and my back carbon. I'm going to call carbon 2 the front carbon, carbon 3 the back carbon. So now I have to figure out what's attached to the front carbon. If you said two hydrogens in a methyl group, you're right. So now I'm going to go ahead and just write that those three groups in the same orientation for all six structures. And that's going to keep me from double rotating and ending up with the same conformations. So I just usually write out the front carbon for all six. Now what's attached to the back carbon? Two hydrogens and an ethyl group. Okay, There's a reason why we learn these alkyl group names. So you have to write the entire ethyl group it doesn't do you any good to write a CH2 because if you got more than one CH2 group, we're going to base our rankings of energy on the sizes of the groups. Bigger groups gauche is worse than bigger groups anti. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got two hydrogen and an ethyl group. So here's my starting conformation A. So now let's go ahead and rotate the back carbon. So let's put the CH3, CH2 group there with the two hydrogens there. And now let's rotate down one more time to CH2, CH3 with our two hydrogens there. So here's our three staggered conformations, A, B, and C. Let's go ahead and write the three eclipsed. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the CH2, CH3 here, and then the two hydrogens there, the CH3, CH2 there, with the hydrogens here, and then the CH2, CH3 group there, with the hydrogens there. And so that's going to be, we'll call it E, wait, we'll call it D, E, and F. Okay, so of the staggered conformations, which one is the most stable, which one is the least stable, which conformations have the same energy? Got an answer? Well, it turns out that A and B both have a methyl group, gauche to an ethyl group, and so they have the same energies. Now, are A and B more or less stable than C? If you said less stable, you're correct, because having the methyl group and the ethyl group anti, okay, so this is our anti, and over here, these are our gauche. So having the anti-conformations, this is the most stable, so I would call this number one, and then these are the same energy, so I'm going to go ahead and call those number two. Okay, how about a gauche? I'm sorry, what did I say? Stagger and gauche. No, these aren't gauche. Staggered and eclipsed. How about the three eclipsed? Any have the same energy? If you said E and F, you're correct. They have the same energies. Are they more or less stable than D? If you said they are more stable than D, you're correct. So these would be number three, and then D would be number four. Do you see why? So number one most stable has gauche, or has staggered, with the two methyl groups anti to each other. Number two has a methyl and ethyl group gauche, and so there's some interaction between those groups, which we sometimes call steric hindrance or a steric interaction. The steric just meaning basically that those CH3 and CH2, CH3 groups represent big clouds of electron density. The gauche then is, is second most stable, having an ethyl group eclipse a hydrogen and having a methyl group eclipse a hydrogen is much better than having the two big groups eclipse each other. And you might say, well, wait, but actually the ethyl group has to eclipse something. It's better to have it eclipse a hydrogen than it is to have it eclipse a non-hydrogen group. So E and F are number three in stability and number and D is the least stable of all of the four. Okay. And we will do more of these kinds of problems on Monday. <laughs>
which is what this lecture is for. So the idea here is that we need to be able to draw the three staggered and three eclipsed and then rank their energies. Now, my original question, my original point with this was that when you have these N alkanes, the, the straight chained alkanes, that the reason that they're zigzagged is because every time you look down a carbon carbon bond, you're going to want the big groups to be anti to each other. And so if you look at the zigzag conformation of pentane, in each case, all the big groups are anti to each other. And that's true down here for decane. If you don't believe me, look at all the carbon-carbon bond con uh, possibilities. But the zigzag conformation turns out to be the most stable because in that case you do have um, the staggered anti as the most stable conformation. And the staggered anti is formed for every carbon-carbon bond. Okay? So what we will do in class is I will entertain questions. And then we will do some more problems dealing with writing the conformations of non-cyclic alkanes using these Newman projections.